But Jesus spoke more about money than anything else in his parables. Jésus a parlé plus de l'argent, plus que toute autre chose dans ses parables. Il a parlé de l'argent. Proper stewardship of what he has given us. Il a il nous dit, il nous dit comment nous devons utiliser ce que Dieu nous a donné. It's one of the main jobs of a disciple is to be like Christ. Un disciple doit être comme Christ lui-même. How many of you have had um, a seminar in money before? Est-ce qu'il y a quelques-uns d'entre vous qui ont suivi des séminaires sur les finances? Good. <laughs> yeah. So um, we're going to talk about a lot of different things today, but first and foremost, it's super important for pastors and church leaders to learn about money. On va parler de beaucoup de choses. Il est très important que les pasteurs et les leaders des églises puissent comprendre ce qui concerne l'argent. People look to you to be an example. Les gens vous regardent en tant que pasteur pour être un exemple. And how can you be an example if you don't understand yourself about how to handle money well? Comment tu peux être un exemple à l'église si toi-même tu ne sais pas gérer l'argent? Comment gérer l'argent? I talk to a lot of pastors, and most of them have a big heart for ministry to people. J'ai parlé avec beaucoup de pasteurs qui ont un grand cœur, ils aiment aider les gens dans les ministères. But they know nothing about money. Mais ils ne connaissent rien à propos de l'argent, les finances. Except that they never have enough of it. Et puis les pauvres c'est qu'ils n'ont jamais eu assez d'argent. So we're going to talk about how to use wisely what God has given you. And how to be an example that others in your church can pattern themselves after. And how you handle church finances is a matter of integrity. And so we want to model that integrity to our people. Let me start by asking a question. Why do you think most people are not able to accomplish their goals? Anybody? Parce qu'ils n'ont pas de plan dans la vie. Yeah, yeah. What else? Une autre chose? Parce que parce que ne connaît pas ce qu'il va faire demain. Because ce qu'il va faire aujourd'hui. Donc il n'a pas planifié. No plan. He doesn't know what he's going to do tomorrow. Yeah. Do you know what the difference is between a goal and a dream? Vous connaissez la différence entre un objectif a plan. et un, 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 un rêve? Oui. Quelle est la différence? Non, moi, je vais répondre à la première question. Je voulais répondre à la première question. Oui, s'il vous plaît. Parce qu'il manque l'organisation. Sometimes, without organization, it's very hard yes. to plan things. Oui, yes, absolument. Really? Yeah. Yeah. The difference between go and dream. La différence entre le but et le rêve. <laughs> The goal is something that you want to do now. Mais le but, le but, l'objectif, c'est qu'est-ce que tu veux faire maintenant? And the dream, it may be something that you want to do maybe in the next five years or ten years. Mais le rêve, c'est quelque chose chose que tu feras après, peut-être cinq ans après. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but I, I have a different answer. Mais j'ai une réponse différente. I think the most, uh, the most reason that people don't fulfill their goals. La raison pour laquelle les gens n'accomplissent pas les objectifs et les buts is they don't have any goals. Mais ils n'ont pas d'objectif au fait. Ils n'ont rien. How can you fulfill your goal if you don't have a goal? Comment tu peux remplir tes objectifs si tu n'as rien? I want to go to California. Je veux aller en Californie. But I don't get in my car. Mais tu n'as pas dans les petits pour aller. Comment tu vas arriver là? I'm never going to get to California unless I make a plan of how to get there. Je ne peux pas arriver en Californie si je ne peux pas un plan pour aller en Californie. And the second reason is something you might not have thought about. La deuxième raison, c'est que Sometimes we set goals that don't reflect our priorities. Or our real true inner values. So if we say we value something but we don't have a goal that's consistent with that, we will fail. So if I say I want to be rich, si tu dis par exemple, j'aimerais devenir riche. And then God calls me to be a pastor. Et Dieu dit, je vais devenir un pasteur. I'm probably not going to get rich. Peut-être que je ne deviendrai pas riche. 
Um, I know very few rich pastors because our priorities are different. Je connais peu de pasteurs qui sont vraiment riches parce que les priorités sont différentes. So if your value is God has called me to be a pastor, si votre valeur c'est que Dieu m'a appelé pour être un pasteur, but you're setting goals about how to be rich. Mais toi dans tes objectifs, tu dis Dieu t'a dit comment je peux devenir riche. You're probably not going to accomplish your goal. Ce sera difficile pour toi d'accomplir ton objectif. Does that make sense? Vous comprenez un peu? So if I say I value losing weight. Si je dis par exemple je vais perdre un peu de poids pour nous qui avons un peu de ventre. Je vais perdre de poids. But I don't go on a diet. Mais je, ne, je mange toujours la même chose. Je ne, not gonna happen. je ne fais pas d'exercice. Rien ne va arriver. And for the record, I just lost 16 pounds. So bon, moi, j'ai perdu 16, 16 pounds déjà. <laughs> moi, j'ai marché ce matin. I woke this morning. <laughs> so it's important to know what you value. C'est important de comprendre qu'est-ce que tu valorises dans la vie. Quelle est ta priorité de vie? So that you can make plans, so you can make goals that are in align with your values. Pour que tes objectifs puissent maintenant être en même ligne que tes valeurs. In your workbook, right inside the first page. Regardez dans le, le livre que je vous ai donné. And I know this is in English, so you may not understand all the words. Ça c'est l'anglais, parfois vous n'allez pas comprendre tout le monde. But on page two, there's a list. Of values. Page two, y a la liste des valeurs. Page two. 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 Page 2. 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 Now we all know that Jesus is number one, so you don't have to put that one down. <laughs> Thinking about your life, what are the three things that you value most? So some of the things that are here um, is financial security. Par exemple, il y a la sécurité financière, regardez là-bas. Freedom. La liberté. Friendship. La fraternité. Fun. Fun, c'est-à-dire les activités de plaisir. Health. La santé. Honesty. L'honnêteté. There's a, any number of things that you can value personally. Est-ce qu'il y a des choses ici que tu peux dire, moi j'aime beaucoup ces valeurs-là. Tu retiens trois de ces valeurs qui sont But if you can write down the three values that you value most of anything, écris trois valeurs que tu valorises plus que toute autre chose. These are going to be the basis of what you're going to build some of your goals on. Et ça va vous aider à avoir un objectif dans la vie. Si tu as, la, tu as une valeur, tu auras des objectifs dans la vie. So your goals must reflect your values or you're not likely to be successful. Vos objectifs doivent refléter les valeurs que vous voulez défendre. So we're going to talk about how to make financial goals that reflect your values. Comment avoir des objectifs financiers qui vont refléter vos valeurs? Comment est-ce qu'on peut avoir des bons objectifs? Goal, n'est-ce pas? Objectif. Goal. Comment avoir des bons objectifs qui vont refléter nos valeurs? Yes. We didn't talk about vocabulary, so I may use a lot of words that are hard to translate. <laughs> so, if we want to live the way Jesus lived, we have to have a plan. Jesus came to earth, he had a very specific plan, didn't he? He had three years to teach 12 people, everything he knew. Il avait trois ans pour enseigner 12 personnes, tout ce qu'il avait à lui, investi dans ces 12 personnes. And they still didn't understand. They, they still didn't understand. Et puis ils n'ont même pas compris. Yeah. 
So we want to talk about when God gives you gifts, when God gives you money, what do you do? God did the donate don. God did the don l'argent. Qu'est-ce que tu dois faire? There's only three things you can do with money. Il y a trois choses que tu peux faire avec l'argent. Tu mets ça. Trois choses qu'on peut que tu peux faire avec l'argent. You can spend it. Tu peux dépenser l'argent. You can save it. Tu peux sauver l'argent. Or you can share it. Ou tu peux épargner ou bien tu peux donner à quelqu'un. Yes. Spend. La première chose tu peux dépenser. Save. Tu peux épargner. And share. Et puis tu peux partager, donner à quelqu'un. And we need to be doing all of those things. Et nous devons faire toutes ces choses. And surviving at the same time. Et en même temps vous devez survivre dans la vie. And that's very difficult. Et ça c'est vraiment difficile. Especially if you don't have a very high income. Si tu n'as pas beaucoup d'argent, c'est difficile d'accomplir les trois choses. Si tu n'as pas beaucoup d'argent, les income, les ressources. We're going to talk about something that in English we call a budget. On va parler de quelque chose qu'on appelle en anglais budget. But I don't like that word. Mais je n'aime pas les mots budget. When I think of a budget, quand je parle d'un budget, I think of being in jail. Je me sens comme je suis en prison. You can't spend this. You can't spend it. You must spend it. These are the rules. I prefer to call it a spending plan. We prefer the term the budget. Spending plan. That is the plan of the funds. That's right. The plan of the funds. We should call it a budget. So when God puts money in your hands, what is your plan? You need to have a plan before you get the money. Il faut avoir un plan avant d'avoir l'argent. Parce que si tu as déjà l'argent, où les choses viennent en tête? Because if you're like me, si tu es comme moi, and you don't have a plan, tu n'as pas de plan, you spend it. Tu vas dépenser ton argent si tu n'as pas de plan. We don't want to give God what's left over after we've spent. Nous voulons pas donner à Dieu ce qui est ce qui reste quand on a déjà dépensé. Because most of the time there won't be anything left over. Parce que rien ne va rester quand tu commences à dépenser, tu verras que rien ne va rester. So we want our spending to be intentional. Nous voulons que nos dépenses soient des dépenses intentionnelles. Nous nous voulons même. It's like when you go food shopping. Quand tu quand tu vas acheter la nourriture, you take a list. Tu as une liste. And you only buy everything on the list. Rappelez-vous quand vous allez au store, vous avez une liste, n'est-ce pas? Mais quand vous allez, c'est tous les mamans, maman. Here's my list. Ça c'est ma liste. This is what I bought. Ça c'est les choses que je vais acheter. Est-ce qu'on fait ça? Tu trouveras quelque chose d'autre encore. There's candy in the checkout aisle. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to have a financial plan that makes sense. And just so you know, we're not going to look at every page in this book. We're going to skip over to page 7. We're not going to look at every page in this book. Did you say we're going to be looking for the financial plan? Yes, yes. We're going to be um, looking at um, a financial plan that you can actually use. We're going to talk about a plan financier that you can use. Yes. A plan financier. A plan de finance. And we're also going to add some things that are not in the book. We're going to add some things that are not in the book. We're going to add some things that are not in the book. So the first principle is on page seven. La le premier principe à la page sept. And it's called balanced spending. The dépenses équilibrées, c'est ça. Balanced spending. The dépenses qui sont balancées ou équilibrées. Okay. It doesn't matter if you're good at math. C'est pas des études en la mathématique. The money that comes in. L'argent qui vient chez toi must not be more than the money that goes out. Vous avez suivi ça? Ce qui tu gagnes ne peut pas dépasser ce qui tu dépenses. C'est ça le principe. Tu ne peux pas dépenser plus que ce que tu gagnes. The United States government should learn that lesson. Même notre gouvernement est en train d'apprendre cette leçon là eux-mêmes. Because they always spend more than they have. Parce que souvent le gouvernement américain dépense plus qu'ils ont. And that's one of the big arguments in Washington right now. Et là ils ont un débat. Voyons voir comment est-ce qu'on va ne pas 
about the problem than the finance. Yeah, they set a bad example for us, don't they? They were not doing a good example for us. But it's very simple that to make, not spend more than you make. Pour ne pas dépenser plus que ce que tu gagnes. You have to keep track of what's coming in and what's going out. Voilà, tu dois tra, tu dois comprendre, tu dois to track. C'est dire tu dois suivre qu'est-ce que tu es en train d'amener. Yeah, qu'est-ce que sont les entrées? Tu dois connaître qu'est-ce sont les entrées. So, for example, the next page. Par exemple, regardons la page suivante. On page eight. À la page huit. Here are some categories of things you could spend money on. Regardez la catégorie des choses que tu peux dépenser ton argent. It's a good practice. C'est une, c'est une bonne pratique. To take a list like this. Quand vous avez une liste comme celle-ci. And write down how much you spend. Tu écris combien tu as fait de dépenser. Every month. Chaque mois. On these things and other things. Dans ces choses qui sont citées ici. And once you know how much you've spent, then you can develop a plan every month of how much you expect to spend. Tu peux développer un plan chaque mois pour savoir que je vais dépenser autant. So we can name some Yes. So you have to, um, maybe you have insurance and you have premiums you must pay. Regardez par exemple pour la santé, il y a par exemple l'assurance. Or you, you need medical prescriptions and you have to pay for your medicine. Uh, obviously, food and rent. La nourriture, la, la location de la maison. The most expensive ex- thing that you have in your life. Les choses les plus, de, les plus que tu as dans la vie. Children. <laughs> Les enfants. Est-ce qu'on peut la Les enfants, ça faut investir. Children are very expensive. Les enfants sont and here's a hint. <laughs> Don't take your children to the grocery store. <laughs> That's a terrible <laughs> They get into cereal aisle. <laughs> and they want every cereal that has sugar in it. <laughs> and it's expensive. Yeah. But the point is, not... What is not, don't buy Fruit Loops, that's not the point. Fruit Loops is cereal. The point is that I'm not telling you to stop buying cereal. <laughs> but plan in advance what you're going to buy. So if a certain cereal is important to your children, and you as a parent think that's in your best interest, there's nothing wrong with buying it, as long as you've planned it in advance. We call that impulse buying. And that will destroy your budget, your, your yeah. spending plan. So if you want help keeping track of your expenses, keeping track. Yes. Software that you can use. Il y a aussi des programmes que free. C'est vraiment free. C'est moi, c'est vraiment free. Et vous pouvez utiliser ces programmes pour voir comment est-ce que vous avez fait ça. Vous avez déjà tout le monde ne pas comment je vais faire chaque mois. So then it's easier to develop a spending plan when you know what you've spent. Quand vous connaissez ce que vous dépensez, c'est facile d'avoir un budget ou d'avoir. Uh, un plan de dépenses. Okay, now skip over to page 11. Allez à la page 11, par exemple. Now that you've started to track what is coming in. Quand tu as commencé maintenant à traquer, à suivre, qu'est-ce qui est en train de venir en tant qu'argent dans ta poche? You can start to create goals of how you're going to spend. Tu commences maintenant à établir des objectifs, comment tu vas dépenser ce que tu as. 
we use an acronym. S M A R T. S M A R T. Ce sont des abréviations à votre droite. The first one is. Well, in English, that says the word smart. Okay. Et ça forme le mot smart. So we call them smart goals. On appelle ça smart goal, yeah. Because, Re -re yeah. Regardez les termes qui sont là, spécifiques. S. Yes. Measurable. M. Yes. Achievable. A. Result based. L. Et puis time. T. Il y a T. Donc ça devient smart goal. Donc tous ces gens. We have to, we have to explain. Yes, I will. Yeah. So if your goals don't have at least most of these five characteristics, si les objectifs que vous avez financièrement n'accomplissent pas ces caractères qui sont là cinq, it's really not a goal. Ce n'est plus un objectif. It's a wish or a dream. Ça devient un rêve ou un souhait seulement, mais ce n'est pas un objectif. So turning your wishes and dreams into reality means you need goals. Il faut avoir des objectifs pour que votre rêve devienne une réalité. So smart goals must be specific. Donc, il faudrait que nos objectifs soient spécifiques. C'est la première euh, caractéristique. Ça doit être spécifique. So if you say, I want to go to California someday. Tu dis, je vais aller en Californie, moi, à Florida un jour. Is that a goal according to SMART? Regardez SMART. Est-ce que c'est un goal quand tu dis, c'est un objectif? Quand tu dis, je vais aller en Californie. No, it's, it's a desire, it's a hope. C'est un désir, c'est une espérance. C'est les choses que tu penses qu'il va faire. But it's not a goal because you haven't really been specific. Ce n'est pas un objectif parce que tu n'as pas été spécifique. Now, it's specific because you said California. Quand tu dis Californie, but California is a very big place. <laughs> Californie, c'est très grand, c'est vrai. Okay. The second thing must be measurable. Vos objectifs doivent être très mesurables. Going to California is measurable. Tu peux aller à Californie quand tu mesures ça. Because you see the sign that says "Welcome to California," you know you've arrived. Parce qu'il y a un signe qui dit "Bienvenue à Californie." C'est vrai que c'est un peu. But if you don't make a goal that's measurable, you'll never know if you've actually achieved it. Si tu n'as pas un objectif qui est mesurable, c'est difficile d'avoir d'accomplir votre objectif. Even something like saying, "I want to be rich." Par exemple, quand quelqu'un dit, "J'aimerais être riche." What does that mean? Qu'est-ce que ça signifie? Whatever your goal is, you have to have a specific idea of what it is you're trying to accomplish. Ayez une idée spécifique de ce que vous voulez accomplir. Pas être vague financièrement. And the third thing is it must be achievable. Ce que vous voulez faire doit être achievable, c'est-à-dire achievable. Quelque chose qu'on peut faire concrètement. Qu'on peut atteindre. Qu'on peut atteindre concrètement. Yeah. If I say I want to go to the moon, si j'aimerais aller à la lune, I don't have a plan to do it. Mais je n'ai pas un plan d'arriver à la lune. It's also not achievable for me. Ce n'est pas vraiment quelque chose que tu peux faire. Comment il y a... C'est pas réalisable. Yeah, c'est pas réalisable. Je vais aller à l'une parce que c'est réalisable ça. So I can say I want to do something, but if it's not achievable for me, si je, je peux dire je veux faire quelque chose, mais si ce n'est pas réalisable, ce n'est pas un objectif. Now there's a difference between something that's not achievable and something that you're just afraid of. Il y a la différence entre quelque chose qui n'est pas réalisable et quelque chose que tu as peur. Tu as peur de je ne peux pas accomplir ça. Sometimes our fear keeps us from doing things. Parfois la peur que nous avons nous empêche de faire des choses financières. Now you all are an example of fearless people. Vous êtes un exemple de gens qui n'ont pas peur. I can't think of anything scarier. Je ne peux pas avoir peur par exemple. Than leaving your country. Comme vous avez fait, vous avez laissé vos pays. Going to a place where you don't know the language or culture. Vous allez dans un pays où vous ne connaissez ni la langue ni la culture. And creating a life. Et commencer à vivre avec votre famille. Si ça c'est vraiment un miracle. You all are either fearless. Vous êtes des gens qui n'ont pas peur. Or crazy. Ou bien vous êtes des gens qui sont crazy. Ça veut dire des gens qui sont fous. Quelqu'un qui vient, ou bien des deux. Vous êtes des grands miracles. I mean that sincerely. I admire you for what you're doing. Je vous admire. Thank you, sir. So it shows that you have something in you that a lot of people don't have. Vous avez quelque chose en vous que beaucoup de gens n'ont pas. Now you have to apply that same kind of courage to things like money. 
Appliquez ce courage-là dans les domaines financiers aussi. Oui. Le courage que vous avez amené ici, oui. appliquez ça aussi financièrement. Thank you. Tu vois. Be willing to take chances. C'est bien de prendre des chances. But make sure it's actual achievable goal. Il faut que ce soit vraiment quelque chose qui soit réalisable. And then the R. Les mots A et results based. Les résultats. Quand vous avez des objectifs, il faut avoir des résultats pour vérifier ça. Again, you're looking to be able to say, I did this. J'ai fait ça. J'ai fait ça. Avec ce que j'ai planifié. So if you say, si 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 tu dis. My plan is to spend $400 on groceries. Mon plan est de dépenser 400 dollars à Walmart pour pour aller acheter des choses. You will never know unless you set a goal that says my goal is to spend no more than $400. Tu peux dire mon objectif c'est de ne pas dépenser plus de 400 dollars pendant un mois pour ce que je dois manger. So that goal is results based. You know if you've done it or not, if you're keeping track. And then timed is the last one. So again, if I say I want to go to California someday, someday may never come. Un certain jour, j'irai, mais quand il faut le temps préciser quand est-ce que tu veux aller en Californie. But if I say I want to go to California in August, mais si tu dis je veux aller en Californie au mois d'août, or even more, I want to go to San Francisco in August, je veux aller à San Francisco au mois d'août, and it's going to cost six hundred dollars for airfare, ça va me coûter six cents dollars pour l'avion, la, and it's going to cost five hundred dollars for hotel. Mon hôtel va coûter par exemple cinq cents dollars. Now you're starting to have a goal. You're starting Maintenant, to have a plan. Tu commences à avoir un plan. Tu commences à avoir des objectifs. Then as you're doing it, you keep track to make sure that you're on target. Plans are not set in stone. Tu vas commencer maintenant à traquer, à suivre ce que tu as décidé de dépenser. They can be changed. Ça peut aussi changer. But the more you do it, the more you track it, the better, the better able you'll be to predict. Si tu suis tes dépenses, tu verras que tu seras habitué à suivre cela de temps en temps. Now on the next two pages. Regardez les deux pages qui viennent. On 12 and 13. Page 12 et 13. There's lines where you can take this home and do this at home. Amenez ça à la maison. Vous pouvez, par exemple, commencer à faire votre budget ou vos dépenses. This is where you can enter what you actually spend, what you actually bring home. Qu'est-ce que tu as qui amène à la maison? Quel est ton income? Combien tu as amené à la maison? Right, and then you can say what you spent. Tu peux maintenant commencer à voir combien. Qu'est-ce que tu as été dépensé aussi? And you see at the bottom of 13. Oui, à la page 13. It says total in. That's the total income you made in one month. And then subtract the total you spent. Total out And then you'll just see whether you have spent more than you've earned or you've saved some of what you've earned. Du jour au jour, on dépense, c'est qu'on a, on fait ce qu'on veut, non, ce n'est pas comme ça. Now you notice, back on page 12, regardez à la page 12 encore, remember I said there's only three things you can do with money, regardez là-bas, il y a trois choses que tu peux faire avec l'argent, spend, tu peux dépenser ton argent, save and share, tu peux épargner ton argent, puis tu peux donner ton argent, c'est écrit au point là-bas. Yep. All three of those must fit into your total of what you spend. Ces trois choses doivent être dans vos dépenses, dans le total que vous allez faire. Now you can put down whatever amounts you want, but they have to always equal, income must equal expense. Tony, ce que tu amènes doit être la même chose que les dépenses que tu as. Tu ne peux pas dépenser au-delà de ce que tu amènes. Tu fais entrer toi-même. Now what's the danger if you don't have emergency savings saved up? Quel est le danger quand nous n'avons pas Les dépenses urgentes, ce qu'ils appellent emergency saving. Donc, vous gardez l'argent pour des cas graves, des cas d'urgence. The danger is le danger c'est que credit cards. Le, le, vous aurez des credit cards. Yeah. Credit card company. Les compagnies de crédit is not your friend. 
<laughs> they will say to you, congratulations, we give you credit of $2,000. And then when you have put $2,000 in your credit card, they say, congratulations, your income, your limit has gone up to $3,000. Are they doing that because they like you? Are they doing that because they have your best interests at heart? They're doing it so they can take your money. Debt is like having an extra person at your dinner table. <laughs> so you're feeding someone you don't even like. <laughs> and debt just keeps piling up. And eventually you can have so much debt that you can't live. You get into real financial trouble. And here is where pastors and church leaders must really set an example. Because a lot of people in your church will have a lot of debt. And if people in your church have a lot of debt, that's less money they can use for God. Right? So they need to be financially healthy. And for them to be financially healthy, you must be financially healthy. You must be a good example of what God has given you. So I urge you to work on this budget and talk with your spouse if you're married. Now, my spouse and I have a routine. We don't do it as much now. Once a month, we have a very romantic date. We sit down and we look at our budget. <laughs> Not very romantic. But, communi <laughs> but communication about money is one of the leading causes of divorce. Disagreement about how to spend. So it's important that you have good communication in your family. It's also important maybe that you talk to your children about money. So let's use the illustration of buying cereal. Go ahead and take your children shopping. And take that $5 box of cereal off the shelf. And tell them, I make $25 an hour at my job. I have to work, do the math quick, I have to work 10 minutes just so you can eat this box of cereal. Yeah. So I'm trading my life for your cereal. Isn't that true? Whenever you buy anything, you're trading your life for that thing. Now that's not always bad. I remember back when the Patriots, you American football fans? Yay! <laughs> they were in the Super Bowl. So I decided I needed a really big TV to watch it. <laughs> but I didn't just on the spur of the moment buy a television. I planned for it. And I saved for it. And it fit in my budget. Nothing wrong with that. As long as it's part of your plan and you can afford it. So I traded some of my life 
for a television. My view for a television. Sacrifier ma vie. And it was worth it. The Patriots won. Les Patriots avaient gagné, donc j'avais la chance. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Vous comprenez un peu? Something that's not in your book. Je pas dans ces livres, so you might say to me, I don't have enough money to save. Almost everybody has what I call spending leaks. A leak like a freaking faucet. Let me give an example. Um, don't any of you buy coffee at Starbucks? Vous allez souvent acheter des cafés de soir dans le Donald's. Yeah. Starbucks coffee costs what? Three dollars. Quand vous allez à Starbucks, c'est la place où on vend des cafés. C'est ça vous mettez? Trois dollars. Yeah. C'est cher. Dunkin' Donuts coffee costs two dollars. Mais quand vous allez à Dunkin' Donuts, c'est deux dollars. So if you love to go to Starbucks, mais si tu veux aller à Starbucks, but you don't have enough money to save. Tu n'as pas assez d'argent pour les familles. Stop going to Starbucks. Ne va pas là-bas à Starbucks. Et go to Dunkin' Donuts. Va à Dunkin' Donuts acheter du café qui est moins cher que toi. So now you've saved one dollar every time you drink coffee. Chaque fois que vous prenez le café, vous sauvez combien? Un dollar. But the trick is, you can't just pretend that you saved a dollar. Tu peux pas prétendre que c'est vrai que je suis en train de prendre un dollar. You must take that dollar and put it in a jar or somewhere. Prendre ces un dollar, mettre ça quelque part dans une what? Because if you're like me, you'll leave it in your wallet and spend it on something else. <laughs> so if you do that five times a week, that's five dollars. That's not much. What's five dollars times fifty weeks? Imagine you spend five dollars for five weeks. Ça donne combien de temps? I don't know. Je ne sais pas. Yeah, 25, 25. How much is it? Pendant 5 semaines, chaque jour, 5 dollars. Chaque jour. 50 weeks times 5. Yeah. How much? They talk about uh, how many weeks you said? 50. 15. 15 semaines. Chaque semaine, vous gaspillez? 75. 75. No, 50 times 5. 50 fois 5, ça donne combien? This is two hundred and fifty dollars. Is that enough to save? Two hundred and fifty dollars. This is two hundred and fifty dollars. Can repair your washing machine if it breaks. Ça peut réparer quelque chose de la maison qui était cassé. So you don't have to put repairs on your credit card. Tu n'as pas à mettre ton crédit card pour qu'on répare la machine. Now let's suppose you don't buy your coffee at Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts. Supposons que tu n'achètes pas ton café à Starbucks ou à Dunkin' Donuts. Let's make our coffee at home. Mais tu peux faire ton café à la maison. I have one of those little curd machines. You know what that is? Il y a une petite machine pour mettre le café, le café. Do you know how much it costs every time I have a cup of coffee? Chaque fois qu'il a un petit café qu'il prend, fifty cents. Ça lui coûte cinquante cents seulement. So one cup of coffee could cost you either fifty cents. Le café peut te coûter soit 50 cents or 3 dollars. Mais 3 dollars. That's your choice. C'est ton choix. Now, you can choose to go to Starbucks. Tu peux choisir d'aller à Starbucks. If it fits in your budget. Si c'est bien dans ton budget. And you planned it out. Et tu as planifié cela. But if you're finding you don't have enough money to save, you can uh, find some of these spending leaks in your lifestyle and change how you do things just a little bit that will have a big result. A big result. So if you can find four of these spending leaks, De ces dépenses que tu fais, That's a thousand dollars a year. Vous avez quand même, vous allez épargner mille dollars toute une année. Could you use an extra thousand dollars a year? Imaginez vos mille dollars, ça peut vous aider, n'est-ce pas? Yes. So it's easier than it sounds, isn't it, to find money? Donc c'est l'argent est difficile à trouver. Hein? C'est bien d'en penser, mais pour en trouver, c'est difficile. Whether that's money that you give to the Lord, 
Même l'argent que nous donnons au Seigneur. Or that you put in the bank and save. Même vous mettez à la banque pour épargner. Or that you spend on your family. Mais c'est que vous dépensez pour votre famille. Let me say a little word about savings. Je voudrais parler un peu de ce qu'on appelle épargner. You know, a lot of people don't trust banks. Beaucoup de gens n'ont pas de confiance à la banque. What happens when I put my money in a bank? Qu'est-ce qui arrive quand tu caches même mon argent à la banque? Now, especially lately, some banks have been getting in trouble. Maintenant, quelques banques ont des difficultés, ils ont des problèmes. Do you know how banks work? Vous savez comment les banques fonctionnent? You put your money in the bank. Tu mets ton argent à la banque. They take your money and they lend it to somebody. Ils prennent ton argent, ils empruntent encore quelqu'un d'autre. So you have a mortgage now, and your bank has lent you the money for your mortgage. I have a mortgage. Using your money. And you know how they say thank you? They pay you 1% interest. <laughs> and they're charging 7% interest for the mortgage. Now the reason the banks are getting in trouble is because they lent too much money at low interest rates. And then people come to the bank and say, I want my money. And they'll say, I'd love to give it to you, but it's out in loans right now. And so I don't have the cash to honor your request. Now, that's why people don't trust banks, but in the U.S. system, <laughs> your savings are guaranteed by the U.S. government. So there's nothing to worry about. So let me talk a little bit about compounded interest, interest that grows. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you a deal today, okay? This is not real. <laughs> I'm going to give you a choice. Would you rather have me give you a check for $1 million today or give you one cent today and double that every day for a month? So 100% interest on your penny. So today, you have one penny. Tomorrow you have two. Then you have four. Which would you rather have? It's a trick question. <laughs> After 10 days, you have $10,000. You put one penny in. The rest is all interest that I have paid you. 10 days, $10,000. But you could have had a million. 20 days in, you're up to... I think it's $150,000. Yes. At the end of 30 days, you have more than $10 million. And you've invested one penny because of interest at compounds. So the good thing about a bank, they will pay you interest on the interest they've already paid you. So if you put in $100, they'll give you interest. And now you have $110, now they'll pay you interest on $110. But you still only put in $100. Now, the, the hard part about compounding interest it takes a long time. Ça prend beaucoup de temps. Yeah. By my illustration of 30 days, you had not very much until the end of the month, right? So when you save, it's important to put it away and leave it. Si vous voulez épargner votre argent, mettez ça à côté et ne regardez plus ce qui est là. 
So you have to build that into your budget. Vous devez mettre ça dans votre budget. Okay. Let me see where we are here. Something that I'd like you to do at home is on page 20. À la page 20 s'il vous plaît. It's a little quiz. We won't do it now. But it kind of measures your financial attitude. Ça va mesurer votre attitude financière. And I'm not going to say much more about that, but it tells you how to kind of grade yourself about your financial Je attitude. Faire ce petit exercice ici. So what I want you to remember and to take away today is ce que vous allez amener, vous allez vous rappeler aujourd'hui, c'est que you need a plan. Il faut avoir un plan de finance, s'il vous plaît. Your spending should be intentional. Vos dépenses doivent être ce que vous avez voulu, pas émotionnel. Ne dépensez pas l'argent parce que vous avez une situation seulement comme ça. You can either be the boss of your money. Tu peux être le chef, le boss de ton argent. Or you can work for your money. Mais tu peux, ou tu peux être l'esclave de ton argent. If, if you have a plan, you're in charge. Si tu as un plan financier, tu es en charge. C'est toi qui contrôles ton argent. You make the decision. Tu mets le, tu fais la décision. It's very powerful. Mm-hmm. I mean, ça te donne beaucoup d'autorité de pouvoir, n'est-ce pas? Rather than feeling like a financial victim, au lieu d'être un victime financier, quelqu'un qui souffre toujours, where all the expenses pile into your life, les dépenses ne sont qu'un fond qui tombe sur toi, s'empile sur toi, and you don't know what to do, tu ne sais pas qu'est-ce qu'il faut faire, you don't know where to turn, tu ne sais pas où tourner, you turn to your financial plan, tu dois retourner regarder ton plan financier, that you and your family together built, toi et ta femme. Now I do financial planning for a living. Je, moi je fais, mon travail, je fais le, le plan financier. And when I talk to people, I say I meet one of three different kinds of clients. J'ai trois sortes de clients, trois différents sortes de clients. I have the good savers. Ceux qui épargnent bien. In retirement, they're going to be fine. Et quand ils vont à la retraite, ils seront bien parce qu'ils ils épargnent bien. They have no worries. Ils n'ont pas de soucis. Then I have a second group that says. You're going to be okay. And this young group, they're going to be very good. But you have to be very careful. Mais soyez prudent. Because if unexpected things come into your life, si quelque chose d'urgent arrive dans ta vie, you might not have enough money. Tu n'auras pas assez d'argent. And then I talk to people that I say, il y a le troisième groupe que je dis, you have no hope. Tu vas financièrement, tu ne trouves pas, tu n'es pas sécurisé financièrement. I find that there are a lot of immigrants. Who get to the point of retirement? Ils arrivent à, au moment de retraite. And don't necessarily want to. Mais ils ne veulent pas. But they have to go home to their country because they can't afford to live here. Parce qu'ils doivent rentrer dans leur pays parce qu'ils ont des dépenses en Amérique. And there's nothing c'est wrong with that. That's completely bon fine. C'est bien. That that might be your plan to do that. That's Peut-être completely ça fine. Ça plan de faire ça. But it's better to make those plans now of how will I make it to when God takes me home. C'est ça, il faut faire le, le, le plan aujourd'hui. Comment est-ce que je vais faire quand Dieu va me prendre? Qu'est-ce que je vais laisser à ma famille, à mes enfants? It used to be that our families took care of us. Alors disons que nos familles vont s'occuper de nous. In America, we've lost that, um, what? We've lost that. Tradition. En Amérique, on n'a pas cette tradition que quelqu'un va m'aider quand j'aurai des problèmes. Non. And that's sad. I wish we had the tradition of family Nous taking care of family. cette tradition où la famille va te supporter, les enfants vont te supporter, les oncles, les cousins ici, il n'y en a pas. But you could build that into your plan. Mais tu peux planifier quand même. I had a client. J'avais un client. An, an older lady. Une, une vieille femme. She said, um, my plan is to move in with my daughter when I, when I can't live alone anymore. So she made a plan. Elle a fait un plan. One problem. Mais il y avait un problem. She didn't tell her daughter. <laughs> you have to make sure that's her daughter's plan and your plan. Okay. So I'm going to challenge you. Je vous défie maintenant. Start small. Commencez petit. Make one smart goal for this coming week. Pour la semaine qui vient, fais des objectifs. Something very small. Ça, je vais, je vais faire cet objectif financier. It might be I'm going to put $50 into a savings account. Je vais mettre 50 
Or I'm just going to track my finances for a week. That might be your goal. Because when you start small, it's achievable. You know, a lot of us have the problem, like, I'm going to, I'm going to lose 80 pounds. Some of you would die if you lost 80 pounds. <laughs> But I can't make a goal of losing 80 pounds. I have a goal of eating right. Okay, so it's different. All right, I want to leave a little bit of time if you have any questions. I want to complete what Jim has said. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for this opportunity that all of us can meet here and talk about what's going on in the U.S. I have three questions to ask the people. Do you have a account, an account that can, that can help you with private code? Is there someone who has a account that can grow without having to pay the tax? Is there someone who has an account that can grow without having to pay the tax? Can anybody here has an account that will grow without paying any tax? Is there also among us someone who has an account that, if, for example, we work hard today in the United States and that tomorrow you are not in the U.S. You are not in the U.S. You work a lot in the U.S. If tomorrow you are sick, you cannot work anymore. Do you have an account that can help you replace your income when you cannot work? Okay. We have 400k in our budget. Okay. I will answer you. Okay. So this is something that I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about saving. Saving. Le bien que vous voulez faire demain, ou soit votre avis que vous voulez préparer demain, préparez ça à partir d'aujourd'hui. What you are planning for tomorrow, plan it today. Nous avons des informations qui peuvent, qui peuvent vous aider où et garder votre argent, We comment have grandir some... votre argent et comment avoir de l'argent. Les frères ont une organisation, une organisation, they have an organization that help people how to save money, how to keep their money. Yeah. Raison pour laquelle vous avez nos cartes, s'il y a quelqu'un qui a créé une question. Yeah. yeah, he's giving a card. If someone has a question, you can talk to him. Okay. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Une autre question. Il n'y a pas quoi parler. Non. J'ai une question parce que c'est plus question. Have a question. Quelqu'un veut la Bible. Parce que Jésus Christ avait donné trois personnes l'argent. Ah, he's going back to the Bible. He said Jesus gave money to three people. Yeah. C'est lui qui a fait enterrer l'argent. There is a guy who just put his money. Quand il est revenu, il est revenu, il l'a condamné. Il a dit, pourquoi tu as mis mon argent dans la banque Pourquoi tu as mis mon argent L'argent n'a pas grandi. Parce que le mari n'a pas grandi. Il a condamné. Mais il a dit, vous avez dit, c'est très bas. Maintenant, quand on prend l'argent, on le met dans les services, dans les banques. Quand on prend l'argent dans les banques, mais il n'a pas grandi. Est-ce que nous ne faisons pas des erreurs Comment est-ce qu'on fait Yeah. That's a very good question. C'est une bonne question. And this workshop today, cette 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 réunion que nous avons ici, conference, yes. cette conférence, we talked about this much of finance. On a parlé seulement un peu. Les finances sont grandes, vagues et compliquées. Yes. On a parlé seulement des petites choses. And there's this much we need to talk about. Mais dans les dans les domaines financiers, c'est beaucoup beaucoup de choses. But another workshop we talked about alternatives. Dans d'autres réunions, nous parlons des alternatives, comme vous dites. And we talked about risk and how to handle risk. Comment est-ce qu'on peut make uh, money? Éviter les risques quand vous avez des finances. Yes, I have one question. J'ai une question. 
Um, <coughs> I know the life is different between America and Africa. So we moved from African coming in America. We found that the culture from America and how to save money, how to work hard in life. But one thing is different between us. I just question because you may help uh, other brother and sister that are here. The problem with the in Africa, when we moved from there, we coming here. And we have Many members of the family watching the Lugana house. Because we have kind of the people before we move from Africa here, parents, he may sell his um, building or house. Sometimes some people, parents, will sell the house or anything to help their kids. For you, may go there and then work to help another brother and sister here or family. So when we were arriving here, we found some difficulty. What kind of a difficulty is? The American system is already established. So you got ten dollars an hour. You gonna spend nine point five. I know uh, for those people who work in three, four, two, two jobs, four, to try their best. But even in that, it's always difficult. Because, for example, in Africa, you build your house, you all sell, you don't pay any tax for the government anymore. You can die today, the house belongs to you. And your children, they can carry on on that. But the difference is in America. You can buy a house. And then when you die, if nobody can continue to pay this tax, the government will take it. So, I think in America is easy for how children coming here, baby, growing up on your system, like a house coming over the old person with the family behind the house, we need to help and support, so because all of them look at the house. So they will call any time to help. And they, if you don't help, in in our culture, God will not also help you. Because also the time we have access to coming here because of the family helping us. And the other part that was the trial, so that was the first question. And then the second one is, because we, we have a training about the disciple of Jesus. So I know we have pastor here, there are also people that try to be become pastors. So how to manage the financially in the church? Because sometimes we find a difficulty. The pastor manages the financially who is coming to the church. Because um, some problems can happen. He has a problem at home. His own home. He's coming in an emergency case. He may touch on the finance of the church. Because he doesn't have any choice. So how can you help us on this point? That was my second question. Thank you. Very, very good questions. The first question about the American system versus how other countries do it. I believe we need to learn from you. Because we don't do it right. We do it our way. And in a lot of cases, we have rich and powerful people that can do whatever they want. But I've been where you are. I was a pastor for 20 years before I started teaching people about finances. And I planted a church and I worked three jobs and preached and set up the chairs. 
But so to answer that first question, I would love for you to help change American culture. Vous nous aider à changer aussi notre culture parce que vous, la famille compte beaucoup dans les supports financiers. That seems like an impossible job. Ça peut être peut-être impossible. And it maybe it is. Maybe that's unachievable. Peut-être ce n'est pas atteignable. But in your sphere of influence, Mais dans votre sphère d'influence, in your circle of disciples, dans votre cercle de disciples, you can make a difference. Vous pouvez aussi enseigner. And then your disciples, if they turn into disciples, will make disciples. Et vos disciples peuvent enseigner places. aussi à d'autres disciples. So you can start a healthy Christian community. Vous pouvez commencer une, une communauté chrétienne qui est en bonne santé financièrement. That's living within American culture. Qui vit dans la culture américaine. Trying to cope with it as best you can. Vous pouvez and but supporting each other when you do it. So in the American culture, education is key. Dans notre culture, l'éducation c'est la base d'abord. And you may say, well, it's too late for me. Tu peux dire, mais c'est tard. Moi, j'ai déjà vieilli. Quelle éducation encore? I'm 69 years old. Moi, j'ai 69 ans. Well, I will be in two weeks anyway. Dans deux semaines. I'm still learning. Je suis en train Je suis I'm still growing. Je suis en train de grandir encore. It's never too late. Il n'est jamais tard to learn. Pour apprendre. And when you learn, then you can advance in our system. Quand vous apprenez, vous allez bien avancer dans les systèmes américains. So that's an important thing to teach our children, if not for us. C'est une bonne chose d'enseigner à nos enfants si nous ne pouvons pas. As far as finances in the church, the one thing I did when I was starting a church, I found a godly man. It doesn't have to be a man, it can be a man or woman, depending on, on your view of things, who was trustworthy, who handled the money. So I didn't handle the money. Because then there's no way I can be questioned. Parce que quand vous êtes pasteur, ce serait pas bien qu'on vous pose des questions. Votre motif, comment vous avez utilisé l'argent? Now we can question his integrity. But not mine. L'intégrité, c'est la personne qui touche l'argent. But it's important to identify a person like that. Il faut identifier des gens dans l'église. So that there can be no question about how you're handling the money. Vous n'avez pas de questions pour l'argent. And this has to be a person that you can go to in confidence if there is an issue in your church. C'est une personne à qui tu peux parler lorsqu'il y a un problème important. So somebody needs money and they don't have it, you need to have somebody you can talk to about whether it's wise to help them. Maybe in the future we're going to call, we're going to call all the treasurers of our churches to those who touch the money to give them the formation. Can you give the chance to other people? Okay. Papa André. My question is, Ah, you said something here? Parce que tous nous avons la peur au ventre aujourd'hui. All of us we are afraid. Sur l'économie américaine. All the American economy. On dit que d'ici là, s'il n'y a pas entente, they say if Republican and Democrat they don't agree. Le pays peut entrer en récession. Et il y a même des gens qui nous disent non, retirez déjà votre argent de banque. Some people say if you have money in the bank, please take it. Qu'est-ce qu'il peut nous dire Je sais qu'il est spécialiste. Quelles sont les conséquences Ok. Ok. This is from years of being an American. <laughs> Two things. Deux choses. Don't believe what politicians say. Ne croyez pas tout ce que les politiciens disent. And don't believe what the media says. Et ne croyez pas tout ce que les, les journaux, les télé, la télévision disent souvent. The media's job. Le travail des journalistes is to make money. C'est aussi de faire leur argent. Not always to tell the truth. Parfois, ils ne disent pas toujours la vérité. So they will try to scare you. Ils vont vous faire peur. So that you keep watching. Pour que vous continuez à regarder. So they can make more money. That's just the truth. Yeah. That's la vérité. That's how it works. Now, even in Africa, it's the same. Same. Yeah, it's the same in rural people, you know. Partout. And with politicians. Avec les politiciens. Politicians don't do anything. Les policiers ne font jamais quelque chose until they have to. Juste à ce qu'on les force de faire. So it's like if you're going to fight somebody vous voulez ba vous battre and you're staring at each other et vous vous regardez, you're waiting for one person to throw the first punch before the brawl breaks out. So they're going to stare at each other until the last minute. Ils vont se regarder, ils vont s'entendre à la dernière minute. Neither side wants it on their record 
that they destroyed the American economy. Okay. So my prediction is they won't work it out. I've been wrong in my predictions before. <laughs> as far as the banks, like I said, the American government guarantees that. The good thing about the American public, American um, government, they own the presses that print the money. If they need more money, they just print more of it. I don't want to make light of this. This is a serious problem. Yeah. But my prediction is they'll figure it out. Okay. Uh, Dr. Jim, because I saw you walked up. Yes. <laughs> and then I have a question. And as you was teaching or explaining how you're mentioning something about a credit card. Oh, credit card. Yeah. Coming in America is working with a record. Working with a financial record, the value. With that credit, you can be value, value in the society. Because by the credit we took, as much we paid, as much we pay, yes. our credit score yes. going up. Yes. So, but when you mentioning the points, they don't loving us or helping us. Mm -hmm. They stealing from us. I was thinking. So, do we may we stop taking the credit card? But how we will do now? Because before you buy a house, you must have a good score. Before you do everything here, you need to have a good score. Yes. So with that credit card, what we can do? Do you have some way? I'll answer it in a few sentences. Okay. If we had an hour, I'd actually tell you how to do it. <laughs> so we need you. <laughs> I, I, I want to propose we come back again in a year and see how you're doing. Are you growing in your goals? But as far as debt goes, there is good debt and bad debt. Oh. So if you need to borrow to buy a car so you can get to work, you have to work. Yeah. So that might be some good debt. Right? Uh, if you borrow money to buy a house, that house is going to grow in value. So that might be good debt. And entry level credit card. Beginning credit card, yeah. You can build into your budget paying it back every month. So if you use your credit card to buy $150, Build it into your budget to pay back that $150 before the interest is charged. So what you're measuring is how faithful you are in paying it back. So that will help build your credit score. But you really don't have any debt that you're carrying from month to month. It's when the interest starts that the trouble starts. Lunch is here. Yeah, Jim, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Please come next time. Yes. For another conference. Whenever you invite me, I'll be here.